The first speaker sits in front of a flag of the United States where the stars are shaped like the universal symbol of accessibility. Others speak from offices and public spaces. At the Statewide Independent Living Council of Georgia, we strive for systematic improvements to remove what can be great barriers for people with disabilities. In order to generate this level of change in our state, it is essential that we let our voices and stories be heard. Whether you're attempting to speak with a legislator or navigating the Capitol building, it is understandable how advocacy can be perceived as overwhelming. We hope to address your fears and provide you with tools so that you will feel empowered to do advocacy in your own community. Text reads, Advocacy. Danny Housley speaks from the Capitol Building. So let's start with the basics. What is advocacy and why do we need to do it? Advocacy is speaking for ourselves, not letting other people speak for us. To use your voice. Demanding what we need and sometimes what we want. Advocacy is a process where we promote something we would like to see happen in the world. Oh, I think we start advocating as humans from age one, two, three, and they try to give it negative titles like terrible twos and terrible threes. If you buy something from a store you don't like, take it back. I mean, that's a form of advocacy. Why is it important? Because because when we don't speak for ourselves, other people make the decisions. Because the disability community is often the most marginalized community in the world. Many times we're invisible and people don't realize the needs that we have. But here's the thing, accessibility benefits everybody. Not just the disability community, it benefits the entire community. Text reads, where do you start? Well, where do you start? With the establishment of your objectives and the gathering of your advocacy allies, the real work of connection can begin. However, we know that the next steps are not a one-size it's all model. Each advocate can take a variety of paths according to their needs and skills. Some people's strengths are through letter writing, while others feel more confident making phone calls with pre-written scripts. Uh, there's a couple of different ways of getting in touch with your official. One is just show up. <laughs> Video yourself with your iPhone. The best way to meet a legislator is where they are at, whether at the grocery store, at a baseball game, or in their office. Parker speaks to the legislator in her office. Good morning, Representative Dempsey. My name is Parker Glick, and I am a constituent of yours, but I don't know how to advocate for myself. Do you have any helpful tips? Oh, sure, Parker. You're doing the absolute best thing you can do as an advocate today to come by your state capitol, to meet in person, face to face with you. It's so important when I think about legislation or when I'm thinking about the budget and funding that I remember the faces of the people that have asked me to help take care of their specific needs. Don't remember my face? I always will remember your face. As a wheelchair user, where else may I be able to, to find you within the community? I don't want to be a creeper and find you, you know, around down aisle three or something. Well, you could probably find me there too at times if you were in Rome, Georgia, where I live. But actually, sure, your state representatives should always be available now, it might not be at that exact moment, but to reach out through our offices, through capital email or the phone system, we have people here year-round during regular business hours to help with that. Or also, if you look online at the legislative website, you'll find contact information for us so that you could reach out and contact me directly. We may not have the answer, but we can help you find the person who might have the answer to your question. Oh, so it's that easy? Wow, thank you very much, Representative Dempsey. I had no clue. You know, I think everyone feels challenged in trying to talk to a legislator because they think we're something that we're not. We're just regular people. I'm here to try to help each and every chance that I can, whether I'm in my district, whether I'm traveling on behalf of our state, or whether I'm sitting here and it's always good to have visitors, so please, please come back. Thank you so much. I, I will definitely be coming back. When our elected officials are not in their local offices, they can be found here at the Capitol from the beginning of January through the end of March during what's known as General Assembly Session. Connecting with our state legislators is important because they often don't understand our needs. They don't hear one side of the coin. They hear what the able-bodied community understands. They know because they's not in the wheelchair. So they don't understand what you go through. But you have to always understand that they are busy people, so you keep it strictly and directly to the point. They are individual, and you call them, and you do what you would do with anyone else, and you say, 
I have an issue that I need to discuss with you. The advocates that I've had a huge amount of respect for are those who can remain pleasant, strong, but not back down. Find out what they're going to be. Oftentimes they're somewhere in your own community where you live, so you don't have to drive all the way to Atlanta or you don't have to make that phone call. I think summertime's a good time because that's when the state departments are developing their budget. You definitely want to avoid holidays. You don't want to wait till the end of the year because then you bump up against Thanksgiving and, and other holidays. But understand the power of your vote. If all of us with disabilities would come together, we would be a very powerful voting block. And the only way we're going to get our voices heard if we start voting them out, if they don't listen to us. While everyone's approach to advocacy is different, one thing's for sure, change begins with you. Text reads, let's review. Define. 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 Define your need. Gather, Gather resources. resources. Establish allies. Establish accomplices. Establish allies. Equip yourself. Equip yourself. Equip yourself with fearless confidence. Speak up for yourself. You're worth it. The sooner you begin, the closer you are to making that real change happen. Let's work together and make Georgia more accessible for everyone. I have a mouth of my own. My biggest thing is my mouthpiece. And anybody that knows me can tell you it works every day. Don't sit there and be the victim. You need to speak up. And have confidence in their ability to say, I don't like that, or this is what I want. I have things that bother me every day. But I gotta keep pushing and I gotta keep believing in what I believe in. Do what you gotta do for yourself. Be a fighter. Society don't owe me anything. God gave me enough when he woke me up this morning and told me to go get it. And as I tell people every day, God gave me another chance to get it right. We have a voice. We have power. No person left behind. The statewide independent living council of Georgia logo is shown. Whoa, what is happening here? <laughs> I'm so powerful. SILCGA.org, Georgia Independent Living Network. Call your local center for independent living. They're your best resources for advocacy, and they can talk you through this. Text reads, in honor of one of Georgia's greatest advocates, Elizabeth Dawn Alford. Thank you for taking the time to listen, and I thank you in advance for your advocacy.